know, it's never an easy task to discuss tough issues, sensitive or divisive issues. But leadership is not found in the avoidance of the difficult matters, but in confronting them head on. That is what For Britain has pledged to do, and that is therefore what we will do. In our current era of censorship and deplatforming and shouting down, some issues have been buried deep underground, but that has not made them go away. Instead, they bubble under the surface, ready to explode, an explosion that may well cause more harm than the issue itself. I'm referring to the issue of demography, or more specifically, the demographics of the United Kingdom, today and tomorrow. Why must we at For Britain take hold of this issue now? Because it is crucial that we do not leave it in the hands of extremists, racists or neo-Nazis. We refuse to allow such people to gain ground. Britain is a civilised country and we will stay that way. We will conduct ourselves with decency and with fairness because to do otherwise is to betray the very values we seek to defend. Demography is not, however, a simple science. It is true to say that people have been moving around the world for centuries. We have mixed and intermingled for hundreds of years. But this speech is not a study in anthropology, but in common sense. Common sense dictates that we only live in the world as it is today. We are under no obligation to pay heed to societies centuries ago. We are only obliged to pay heed to our lives today, our time, our era, because this is our time, this is our era. We can only live our lives today. We cannot live them yesterday. Our current demographic then is the only demographic that matters. It matters so that we may understand where we are and where we are going to. As a starting point, we must accept that change is inevitable. No matter how uncomfortable some changes may make some people, change is still inevitable and we must operate with that reality in mind. The world never stands still and nor do we desire it to. We must use reality as our starting point. So let us state some realities. In 2020, there are millions of British citizens who are not white. That's the reality. They are our friends, our neighbours, our colleagues. That is also the reality. For Britain will not turn our backs on our fellow British citizens, irrespective of the colour of their skin. We are clear. All British citizens are equal. All British citizens have the same rights, the same value, the same dignity. There is no compromise on this matter. Now, whilst we are committed to those values, we are equally committed to speaking to and responding to the very real concerns of the native British majority, whom I'll refer to as government documents do, white British. Often, upon mention of white people, some will ask, well, what do you mean by white? Well, I mean white. I mean people whose skin is white and whose ethnicity is therefore European. Once again, this speech is not about anthropology, but common sense. And while anthropology may be somewhat ambiguous about ethnicity, common sense is not. It may not have been the case that Europe was white 50,000 years ago, but we are not concerned with 50,000 years ago. We are concerned with today, and today Europe is ethnically white. For those who argue that there is no such thing as an ethnic European, I say, OK, I accept that, but only if the same applies equally and everywhere. If there is no European, then there is no Japanese, no Nigerian, no Native American and no Aborigine. If those ethnic groups exist, 
then so do Europeans. But nobody would dare to tell the Japanese people that Japan does not belong to them. Nobody would dare tell them that they are not an ethnic group. So let us give white Europeans the same courtesy. We do exist. If we don't, nobody does. If we exist as a group, therefore, and we do, we demand the same recognition, protections and rights as any other ethnic group, including the right to our culture and our ethnic homelands. For if Europeans are not entitled to recognition of our ethnic homeland, then nor should any other group. Just as we would not tell Japanese people that Japan does not belong to them, nor would we tell them that they have no right to remain a majority in their own land. By contrast, Europeans are told on a consistent and regular basis, both implicitly and explicitly, that Europe does not belong to us. But it does. And despite the global and government-funded anti-white racial hatred that is so prevalent, that fuels violence against Europeans and has resulted in countless crimes against us. Despite this, the truth remains true. Europe is the ethnic home of white people and we demand that recognition. We demand also the right to remain the majority in our ethnic home, something other groups take for granted. As part of my commitment to reality, I acknowledge, as was, must we all, that the clock only ticks in one direction. There is no going back. So let us look instead to the future. For Britain is clear. We defend a Britain that is majority white and we defend its right to stay that way. This does not mean that we reject our non-white brothers and sisters. It simply means that we are reclaiming our historic identity and that is our right. For Britain is committed to maintaining a British majority in Britain. This prospect does not, and I repeat, does not oblige us to indulge in crass geneticism, nor does it oblige us to seek to remove our fellow British citizens from their own country on the grounds of their skin colour. We will never succumb to such disgusting and dangerous notions. For Britain is equally committed to maintaining the culture of the British majority. For this, we must be recognised as its indigenous people. And we demand the same cultural protections as all indigenous groups. Non-British languages will not be accommodated. There will be no cultural or religious sensitivities in schools, hospitals or police stations. We will celebrate our history and heritage publicly and openly and British children will be taught to be proud of who they are. They have every reason to be. On day one of a four Britain government, immigration will stop and deportation will begin. With very few exceptions, all illegal immigrants in the United Kingdom will be returned to their country of origin. If they refuse to name their country of origin, they will be held in detention until they do. For a period of five years, there will be no permanent migration to this country, no indefinite leave to remain, no more new British citizens. We will spend that time restoring order and doing all we can to ensure that those who reside in this country do so legally and who are contributing to the well-being of our nation. Those who indulge in criminal practices will be removed permanently. Those who engage in atrocities like female genital mutilation, forced marriage or honour violence will be removed permanently. Those who come to Britain to preach hatred against our society or to encourage the overthrow of our democracy will be removed permanently. Those who come here to whip up hatred of Jews, homosexuals, women or apostates will be removed permanently. Those involved in so-called grooming gangs, even those who are reasonably suspected of involvement in grooming gangs, will be removed permanently. There will be no more burqas, Sharia councils, religious slaughter, and no more will the British taxpayer fund enormous polygamous families. Polygamous families will be removed 
permanently. In short, for Britain is not willing to agree to the status quo. We will not take this forever. No more will we allow ourselves to be reduced to second-class citizenship on our own lands and no more will we look away meekly as our laws and culture are trampled on. This is our part of the world. We are entitled to say who lives here and who does not. Some predictions state that the British will be a minority by the 2060s, but none of this is set in stone. If we take these tough actions and we do it soon, there is nothing at all inevitable about becoming a minority. What we need, however, is not Nazism or fascism or racial division and conflict. What we need is a strong British identity that brings all British citizens in the same direction. A direction of liberty, truth and democracy. That strong British identity must be lifted from the values and the sacrifices of those who went before us. We will take the best of Britain's past, the best of Britain's present, and we will build a British future. Our demographic destiny is not set. Our future is not written. We are its authors. So let us start today. Start now. Let us step up and take responsibility for our nation. Let us fight for its preservation. But let us never lower ourselves to fascism or racism in order to do so. Join us and come with us on this journey. Our destination is Britain. A free, civilised, just British Britain. <laughs>